Welcome, everyone, and thanks for attending Seyun's uh, workshop on uh, cloud computing on the Terra Anvil platform. Seyun joined my lab just a couple of years ago uh, with a, a background in molecular biology as a wet lab biologist, uh, but uh, aiming to become a bioinformatician. And as you will see today, it's unbelievable the amount of, of progress that she has made in that time, and, and she's in the the enviable position of having a very strong biology background and also knowing how to communicate with biologists and develop things in a way that is understandable to a broad audience. I just thought I would very, very briefly here give you an example of what I am talking about. When Seyun first joined the lab, she created this Trello board to, uh, to outline her course of study and for others who want to come from a biology background and um, and learn bioinformatics. So with that, uh, I would like to hand off the baton to Seyun and I look very much forward to your presentation. Oh, thanks for the nice introduction. Uh, the coursework trials look like ages ago, but I probably have a lot of things still I can learn from those things, but... <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, I will probably start the share. So yeah, thanks for joining this workshop on cloud-based genomics platform called Terra. And just want to make sure, uh, I want to tell you, I'm representing a group of efforts under NHGRI's Anvil project. And the content of this workshop is contributed from the BioC Anvil team listed here and then Broad Institute. And then there are a couple of TAs from our team, a BioC and their team and then Broad team. So they will help you if you have any technical issue. And uh, just uh, before I go through, uh, I think you can access this uh, presentation material in the, I put the link in the packable chat room. So I don't want to do those, okay. So this workshop is aiming to introduce the cloud genomics cloud-based genomics platform called Terra. So the cloud-based genomics it, genomic, it platform is a potential solution to the challenges with the rapidly growing size of genomic data, such as data transfer, storage, access, sharing, and computing, et cetera. So here we will go through what Terra offers to solve these issues and how the bioconductor package and Bill can make it even easier. So, the first, actually, to uh, to play with the platform, Terra platform, you need to register and have a Terra account. So, account registration is free, and all you need is pretty much a Google account or institution institute linked email account. And till now, everyone who provided it, that information through the survey is registered and properly linked to the, our linked to our billing account. So we are uh, the NHGRI the Stride Fund is covering any billing happening during the workshop. But if you don't have an account but still want to try, please create your Terra account following this section, and then. Uh, and then leave your email link to your account in the chat room, then TAs can add you to the billing account. So I will start the introduction first. So when we went to the, when we reach to the live demo section, your account should be ready to go. And the one other thing I wanna mention is because we are a fairly large group. So sometimes it takes a while to start many run times from the same billing account. So next couple minutes, so let's say 9.06 right now till 9.10, next four minutes, we will start live demo runtime. So it's, uh, so you, I put how to, uh, I put the instruction here. So you can go to this page and I link, put the link, but go to the workshop and then under live demo, there is the demo workspace section so this is how, what we will do. This like five step is what we will do right now. So we will, so the workspace we are using, the material we are using for live demo is, I have, I put the link here. So once you click there and then you will clone this workspace. So I will use a few terminology that 
probably you don't understand what they are, but uh, those will be covered in a few minutes. So once you open this and then uh, click the three dot menu in the upper right corner, and it will give a drop down menu and then click the clone, and then you will have a pop out window, at clone a workspace, and you will give, you should give a unique name and then billing project is uh, BioC 2020 work, Workshop Jupiter. So uh, let me show you how it will look like. So you go this place and there is a three dot. And then you click the clone. And then you will give workspace name. I will put my own name to be unique. And then billing project is already assigned. And then just clone workspace. Uh, hopefully it doesn't take, okay. And then it directs you to the clone workspace, which is your own workspace. And then what you need to do is from your clone workspace, go notebook tab, and then open annotate manifest, and then click the playground mode. So if I go there, this is my cloned workspace. Go to the notebook, click the annotate manifest, and click the playground mode. And you said that it will take a few minutes. So once it's done, we can play with this Jupyter notebook. So this is what we'll do, just one or two minutes. Uh, let me check if there is any question. Yes, there is no question. So everything is smooth or nothing is working. Okay. Um, it looks like uh, someone was a little lost on how to access the workspace. Could you just go over finding the workspace one more time? Sure. So, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure. So uh, is, can everyone access this? Material because I put that this link on the chat, the presentation material, material the top uh, post in the chat. So if you go there, click to the workspace, and click to the live demo, and then there is the link here. Go to if you don't have a Terra account, you cannot you can access. So you need a tarot account and then click this one will give you to the original page. Would it be? If you were in the list that we're just getting added to after we say you were added, please refresh your browser. That will also help. Okay. Ah, Aiden can see. Yay. Okay. So I think, let me just, uh, let me quick check whether how many people made it work. <laughs> uh, workspace, for me, I see 2020. Whoa, people found it. Oh, okay. I see a lot of you have success. I'm very happy. Ah, okay. So I think it's rolling fairly well. So then I will go to back to the overview. So the framework of so I think it's nine eleven nine <laughs> nine eleven Earth. And so I will so the framework of this workshop is I will give you overview of Terra, what it is, what it offers and then give you the couple example about use cases how people actually can use this uh, uh use this platform and then we will go back to the live demo part that we just started so i think you can see my screen okay so overview of Terra. so uh actually there are many different cloud-based genomics platforms available already and they host different data or different analysis tools. 
and which tools will be the factor, major factor for you to decide what platform will be work best for you. And here is a very short list of them and our focus today is on Terra. And I put the link to these different platforms so if you wanna search more, you can just do it. So what is Terra? So through Terra, you can have a secure remote access to public genomic data without paying stories or like transferring them around. And you can bring best practice tools and pipelines already implemented to Terra directly and easily apply them to your data of interest. And you can also do interactive analysis using your familiar interfaces such as Jupyter Notebook, which is a default, default right now, and RStudio, which is a custom environment that you can, uh, act, uh, you can use, and then Galaxy in a coming soon, in the very, very near future. And Terra's computing resource is from Google Cloud Platform, and on-demand computational capacity change is very easy and flexible. I will briefly show, you, show, show that later. So just like the, and I want to uh, just the more direct answer to like what kind of analysis can you do on Terra? Because usually that's going to be the big question before you pick the any, when you look for the uh, proper platform. platform. And the Terra actually supports two models of analysis, which one is batch processing with workflows and interactive analysis using the Jupyter Notebook, RStudio, Galaxy, and so on. So that's what Terra is. Like, it's a little vague, so I will go through a little more about, uh, more in detail, what kind of resources are there. But before going through what's available in Terra at data workflows and notebook level, I want to give you the brief introduction on workspace. So workspace is the main building block of Terra where different resources are delivered through. So this is kind of your like workbench. If you're like, if you're a bed lab, yeah, it's workbench. Or <laughs> and depending on your goal, you can use a workspace for hosting data or building production pipeline or collecting analysis templates or all of them in one place. And this is a screen capture of a workspace header. So there are five sub menus here. So dashboard is where documentation and workspace information lives. And you can organize and access data in the cloud under data tab. And perform interactive analysis under notebooks. And the bulk analysis so that batch processing can be done under workflows. And workflow takes its input and saves its output based on Terra's data model. So workflow and data part is very connect, closely connected. And actually, Bioconductor's Anvil project make data and notebook connection much more smoother. And job history page is where you can monitor and then troubleshoot your workflow submission. So after you submit workflow, then job history gives the all the time and cost and then the error and backend log, all those information will be there in the job history. So this is a basic building block of Terra. And so your project will reside, uh, live in the workspace unit. And then let me show you what kind of resources are available. So how to explore Terra resources, you can go to the hamburger menu on the top left and then you click the library and then it will give you the drop down menu containing data showcase and workflow so i think i will give the whole go through first and then we'll play with the platform a little later actually instead of going back and forth so first so i said like data showcase workflow so i will let's go through data first so terra holds both open and controlled access data sets and select data sets have a built-in functionality for exploring the data. And here are the available data sets in Terra through various awards. So for example, Endel supports CCDG, CMG, GTEx, 
emerge and then growing, still growing list of other data set. And stage supports top med, and there is the nurses health study, the human cell atlas, and code, PCGA, and target data sets are available. I just want to make a, I want to make a note that the registering for Terra itself does not automatically grant access to all available data, but Terra makes authentication part very simple. So pretty much you link your ERA account once and Terra figure out what kind of data set you have access to. So let me go through the data part just quickly to show you. So this is my workspace. So I, uh, let's go to the main menu. And if I click this and my account is there and under my name, I mean profile, group, billing and so on. And workspace is a list of my workspace. So we are looking at the library part. So if I go data and these are the data set hosted in Terra right now. And let's check the just a brief I will show the data explorer briefly. So let's check the thousand gene on the public data set. So this is a simple overview of it. So if I wanna subset this data, so for example, let's say as exon band file and then female, and let's say the finish the population. So this three filter, three, da uh, three filter leave like 61 data set participant and I can save cohort. Let's say that I will just do the test. And once I have the cohort, I can start with the existing workspace. So I can ex export this selected data, data to the one of the workspace I own or I can start with the new workspace, which will give the same pop-up menu you saw when you cloned earlier. So I can give a workspace name, billing project, and then and so on. And then this will the work this new workspace will contain that the 61 participants data. So it makes it really easy to explore the, the source. So this is data part. And next. I'm going to show you showcase part. So showcase and tutorial are intended to ensure users can reproduce research and learn established methodologies. So this is the screen capture of current showcase and tutorials part. The first column, new and interesting column, contains COVID-19 related workspaces. And featured workspaces has like a tutorial workspaces, specific use cases based on published work, or give users a chance to understand their peers' experimental design. And you can see even there is a bioconductor workspace. And the last example, GATK4 example workspaces, contain showcase, uh, is a showcase of reproducible examples of GATK workflows and tools for general use. So a lot of popular GATK tools are already set here in the, uh, in the workspace format, and many contain tools developed and then supported by both Institute. Let me show quickly. So again here, hamburger menu and go to the library and then go showcase. So these are, you can see there are quite a long list of workspace where you can find the things you need, I guess, here. And that's just quick. So, for example, bioconductor workspace, and it gives the information. And then, because that bioconductor works uh, is more of the interactive interactive analysis part. So, actually, data and workflow part is empty. So, this can be the use case of like collecting the uh, interactive um, analysis downstream analysis tools. But later on, one of the show, uh, one of the use case I will show using all these from all these resources at the same time as one of the example. So there are like notebooks, and then it's pre-populated Jupyter notebook that you can go through. Okay, so let's go back to next is workflow. So the let's see the. The last resource Terra is offering 
is a code and workflow section. This section contains, tool, contains various tools and tasks that made up component of workflows. So users familiar with running workflows can use this repository to find workflow components to run individually or to string together using Widow, the workflow description language. And this section also includes link to other helpful open source workflow repository and look at the right section of under the find additional workflow, there is a doc store and then browse method repository. And then the doc story and NHGR and uh, project team put a lot of effort on doc store. So it's, it has a lot of well-documented workflows and tools up there. So this is the end of my overview. So I just went through what Terra is, what is its basic building unit is, which is workspace. And I introduced the three main resources, which is da data, showcase, and workflows. And next, let's move to the use cases. So I will give you two use cases. One is Terra for paper, which is my own personal exam uh, use experience. And then Levi will briefly go through Terra in the classroom because he used Terra platform to for his one of his core teaching. So for Terra for paper, I actually linked this actual workspace here. You can see here. And so this workspace, let me open this for now. Let's, oh, I have already opened. So this is the workspace I, uh, my workspace I built, that's, uh, I built for my paper. And I briefly mentioned this on, uh, during the earlier workshop on Tuesday CMB workshop. But so this workshop, workspace is providing a fully reproducible example of CMB and SMB analysis of tumor sample without matching normal profile. And this is recently published. And then I have a workspace, Tara's work, Tara workspace of pan, uh, uh, panning with that. So the major benefit of having Tara workspace with research paper is the main thing is the data storage and even compute intense pipeline and downstream analysis are all available in one place which improved the reproducibility quite a lot. And sharing code and providing additional information not included in the paper due to the character limitation and so on are available through the workspace. And I wanna, uh, I wanna, I put the major feature of this workspace at the data and workflow and notebook level. And I will briefly show back and forth. So for data-wise, this paper initially originally used TCGA's controlled bank files, but just for public share to pub, uh, to share with public, I replaced that part with synthetic data set. And they, it has used a bunch of public reference files stored in Google Cloud Platform, and some are actually directly available through Terra. And my own data files, such as BAD, Cosmic BCF, are stored in GCP and some are available up on request, uh, requester page. So let me go to the feature part quickly. So dashboard, as I introduced earlier, it has information on a lot of metadata. So my case, I just put the information about the linked paper and overview, and then how to prepare different input files and then what kind of notebook are available, and then data set, runtime environment, and so on. So I put those information under dashboard, and I just told you the data. So I use the synthetic data set for now, and then Terra doesn't have a limitation on the type of data set you can have. So for example, these are the different data, data format this synthetic data contains. So BCF file, BAM file, index, and the some character. So these are the all different type of data. And then I told you the some of the reference data is even readily available. So if you click here, Terra offers the basic human uh, HG, uh, HG19 and HG38 reference data set. 
and this synthetic data was aligned to the HG19, so I use the B37 human reference data, which is here, and then this gives the basic, most popular, uh, widely used reference data set. And these are offered by Terra, uh, so you don't actually need to pay for storage and so on. So for example, if you see, they are actually sit in the Google Cloud platform on GCP public data for the reference. I think it's that the files I usually use to download from like FTP and then just move around like a few gigabytes of reference files and so on, but they are all here without additional work. And then on the workspace data, I could put different, my own data set. So for example, HD19 blacklist is one of the input file for this works, uh, this, this work. And then I put that, save it in the Terra uh, Google Cloud, uh, Cloud bucket on my own storage place. And then I link that to here. So you can have access to all this. So that's the data aspect of this workspace. And the workflow aspect of this workspace is described here. So left side of this diagram summarize my whole workflow using this paper. And pink boxes around each segment of the pipeline are built into each different workflows. And based on their modularity and then input output requirement. So for example, the numbered prefix represent the order each workflow should run. So here there are three workflows that start with one underscore prefix and all of them can run at the same time because they don't have any dependency on other workflows for their input. So this workflow is look like, so this is my Humor Omni CMV workspace. If I go workflow and then I have all these workflows there and how it looked like, let's check new text one core of normer. And this is the, start page and then if I go script it gives all the different input how this so this is written in middle and all the input and how they are linked to tests are linked to each other and then after test part you have the raw the, uh, raw script so you can have all the detailed information available and then it make very intuitive uh, input providing format. So you can even just unload the JSON file with, with this information. And then there is, you can link this. So I told you, I will not, we don't have enough time to cover the data model, but uh, this output part, you can see this this or workspace. This is the two like prefix that you can link the output back to your input file. So you don't need to chase down different borders or like try to build a creative, really long file name to link each other. Because it has the go, you can put the output, go put, you can put out link, you can link output back to the initial, uh, original data model. So everything is moving together. So, and once you run analysis, you will see the job history, but this is empty for now. So this is a workflow. And the last part is a notebook. So in this works, for this workspace, I have a five Jupyter notebooks using R and four are for data pre-processing and one, are, one is for downstream analysis. And then Envil package enables a direct connection between data and notebook, as I mentioned briefly earlier. And then during the live demo, I will, we will run annotate manifest. Uh, notebook, so we will see it in a little more detail. So this is the use case of Terra for paper, and the Levi will cover Terra in the classroom. Levi, can you take? Yes. Okay. So I'll just mention this fairly briefly to say that um, I've used Terra for teaching one. PhD course in, in applied statistics. And the approach that we used is more or less what you're seeing in this, in this workshop here. This uh, first little bit here about um, how to share basically tells you how to do uh, what, what we've done for this workshop, the creation of a group that allows you to 
um, to share a workspace and share compute with the entire group at once and also to, to take back um, privileges such as billing or write access to a workshop uh, or to a workspace after a deadline. Um, so in the, the context here, this was a fairly small class, um, although I think the methods would scale just fine to larger classes. It was also a class on biostatistics and not on bioinformatics or specifically cloud computing. So my goal was really just to use it as, as, as a platform to allow people to do uh, data analysis and bioconductor without having to install software and without having to uh, deal with a lot of different, different environments on everyone's computer. And I would say that it worked well for this purpose. Maybe I'll, I'll tell you that, you know, there, it has some uh, pluses and uh, minus, minuses. On, um, on the plus side, uh, it, it actually works very well for beginners, I think. Um, and I used the, the Jupyter Notebook feature, which I have found for beginners is actually has a much less of a learning curve than, than our studio. You can have people who have never programmed in R before just start using a Jupyter Notebook and it takes them not very long to, to figure out how to use it and, and start using it. It, of course, it is not nearly as full featured as our studio is for, um, for more advanced users and, and for developers, but for doing an analysis and providing a, a literate coding document that is a document containing writing and, and code that is runnable and producing its output, it works well. The, the, so that's a, a plus, the uh, ease of creating groups and sharing workspaces is, is also a plus. Um, the, maybe if you go down a, a little bit to billing, um, also the ability to share billing is a plus as long as you have some budget for doing this. I found the, the costs quite reasonable because, um, because the, the platform allows each student to select which runtime environments they, they want and, most of, and it says how much the cost is per hour. It also puts them to sleep when they're not in use. So that all worked out fairly well. Uh, on the negative side, it is difficult to predict the costs uh, in advance. And if, if you had students using it a lot and selecting large instances, they could, uh, they could run up a bill. I didn't have any problems like that. Um, and I did monitor it um, reasonably regularly. This, I mentioned here, this Onyx billing account, which I use also makes keeping track of billing a fair bit easier. And it also makes it more uh, compatible with the billing procedures, I think at most universities and with grants. That is, you can prepay, you can specify the amount that you want to prepay. Um, and and then just see how, how your account is used up, which is uh, a little bit easier to manage than the, the regular post pay system that you will use with Google Cloud Platform. Um, maybe also on the negative side, the, um, the file transfer access, as you've seen already, is a little bit different. Um, it's a lot easier now with the, with the Anvil package um, that, that you've seen mentioned um, and you can look into that a bit more, but it makes putting, taking files from your local computer into the workspace, into your environment and between those places much easier than it was before, before that package existed. Uh, I think that's all I was going to say about Tara in the classroom, um, but I'd be willing to answer some more questions about, about how that went. In general, I'm now very keen on using cloud platforms for teaching courses because it takes so much of the issues that you have with, with students having difficulties with their laptops, losing data, difficulty installing packages sometimes. Um, it just takes away all of that and gives everyone the same environment and makes it easy to share data with them. We do have a bunch of questions rolling in. Did you want to take some time to answer some questions now or did you want to wait towards the end? Oh, I think we can actually 
go through the question. Uh, so uh, this is the end of our like overview and then use case introduction. And just before I go, if you want to learn more about, we didn't cover much about Envil package itself. It, and then I saw a couple questions and any more further detailed information, I put the vignette here. And then if you want to learn more about Terra, is Terra, how to start Terra, I put the link to the Terra's user guide. And actually we are now ready to jump to the live demo part, which will be pretty much, we will go through uh, the notebook we started. And then once it started, you can actually open the other other notebook because the runtime is already spent. And just briefly, the existing workspaces, I think it's single cell uh, workflow. And then like actually you can see more about Anvil package functionality in the Anvil package notebook. So we can play around with that. And other than that, I think there is, we can go to the question part, but just one quick thing before, I, before we go to the question. So I think we, I, we both Levi and I use the word like cloning and sharing back and forth. I think in the collaboration aspect of Terra, I think this term is deserved to be defined clearly once at least. So the, ter, uh, the cloning a workspace makes you the owner and allows you to experiment with code and data in your own copy of a workspace workspace without running the risk of affecting a group workspace. So, so you initially at the beginning, we clone the workspace. So you will be the owner and you can do anything you want to do. You will have the exact identical copy of original workspace, but you can do anything you want. Whatever change you make will not affect the original copy. But sharing a workspace allows collaborators to actively work together in the same project workspace. So if you share, so clone will, cloning will be from here and then this clone of workspace pop-up menu and then we did already and then sharing will look like this. So sharing you will give other users different right. It can share or can compute. So if you share the workspace and you, everyone will be looking at the exact, looking at the same workspace. So that, so then you can see others change it, affected uh, the workspace. And one thing I probably, maybe you guys noticed, but I ask you to use the playground mode, but you can actually, because in theory, you clone the workspace, this workspace, so you can just edit and it's not gonna affect others work. But I try to just to mention this, I ask you to play, uh, click playground mode so any under playground mode, any change you make in your notebook will not save and then will not affect. And then actually playground mode allow many people accessing same notebook at the same time. So that's the difference. And then it will be useful concept if you want to use uh, Terra workspace for collaboration for collaborator. So that's the last thing I want to Day. And then I think your notebook run, notebook should be ready to run. You want to take some questions? I can I can pass them on to you. Yeah. I, I mean, so the first one, th this is a perfect question for you with respect to reproducibility of published results. Can you make your Anvil workflow robust against Bioconductor package up and package updates and data updates? And how does this compare? To, for example, having a companion GitHub repository for a publication that includes a Docker image of the workflow. I will say it can be, I think, robust here. If I take it, interpret, uh, I will understand that as like whether I can update my workflow with the Bioconductor package update and other data update. I will say it might be not that easy because I need to manually maintain the thing. But other side is like other, so, and then I haven't experienced it. This is fairly new workspace, so I haven't put too much work on that, keep up with that the update around it. But the, for me, the benefit is people can reproduce. So everything is like 
frozen in that snapshot in that snapshot at the time of publication. So actually, it increased the reproducibility a lot. So I think that part is kind of a gain, gain. But uh, maybe you can. How about? Can you comment on the use of, uh, say, if you're using a particular bioconductor release, how you can make a workspace that always uses that same bioconductor release? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, so that, yeah, in that sense, it's free. Oh, I can guarantee that it's going to work. And, and all those information is very easy. I think there is, I think that's one of the feature, one of the, I, the Elizabeth, you can correct me, but I think that's one of the feature they were considering that the do the versioning of the workspace. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I believe they're working on version control right now, but there is currently no version control for workspaces. Yeah. I mean, different workflows can have a version because like oh. that's a lot of versioning and so on. So, and then data set is it's so big, so it's literally slowly moving, but there is it clearly marked. They are clearly marked, but yeah. So workflow level, I can do versioning. I think versioning for workspace versioning feature is something they are planning on, but I think it's yes. not. Um, there was a question that actually, if, if Martin is here, might be nice to ask about the, yeah. the, the uh, current state and future of Anvil package for local use. I, kn I know that there is a section in the vignette on local use of, of the Anvil package, um, but it's a pretty short section. Yeah, maybe. Natisha, do you know more about Martin's plan? So uh, I can tell you that right now, most of the functionality built in the Anvil package is for use on a RStudio or Jupyter notebook, which is running on the Anvil platform. Um, but there are very limited features which can be used outside of it right now. And uh, maybe it'll be expanded in the future to be used um, outside of the Anvil, but we need to figure out a way to better connect the Anvil with the outside world. Uh, I should can, stop there. Can you can you upload and download files? That is to me the, the the number one big thing that that seems more complicated than it should be is just moving a file from the local computer into into the notebook um, and right. and back. I know that you can do that now with to the workspace with the Anvil package. In my course, I just put all made all data either publicly. Um, publicly available or actually, no, I just made them publicly available data um, to make it easy to, to put into the, into the notebook, but. This is um, yeah. um, Martin, I'll just mention that I developed a, a notebook for uh, an, an Anvil workshop a couple of weeks ago. And at some point I realized that I was actually developing the notebook on my local computer, even though it was uh, meant to be run in the Anvil cloud. And so it's almost interchangeable whether I, was, I had access to all of the Anvil functionality, the bucket associated with my workspace, the, the, the data tables, moving um, files up and down. Um, it was all uh, transparently accessible. Maybe the only thing that's um, that, well, there's some advanced uh, features that are still um, kind of a work in progress, but um, for instance, uh, it's possible from your local compute node, your local computer, to start an RStudio instance that's actually in the Anvil cloud, and um, and then use the RStudio in, uh, instance through the browser, like we're using in the in the workshops um, at the conference. But the RStudio instance is actually in the in the Anvil cloud. I think those are really pretty exciting um, opportunities. Yeah, I, I per yeah, I could run the your the Anvil package work the notebook on my local machine, no problem. So it was pretty neat. And then I personally like the GS util functions a lot because I use I start to use Cloud Bucket, Google Bucket a lot. And then like yeah, whenever I change like the it's just like the util like install and all those like embed that into the code is like 
quite a pain, but make it really art friendly. So I really, really like it. So, okay, so next question. Next question was, can multiple people work on the same workspace at the same time and how is that managed? Um, and maybe I can answer that. Well, because I, in, in my classes, I generally had everyone work in the same workspace by, by making a copy of the file that we're going to be working on and just editing it in the same workspace. And yes, that works just fine. Uh, as soon as one, one person is editing, editing a file, it's locked for everyone else. So two people cannot edit the same file at the same time. But everyone else can still access through playground mode, right? Right, right. They can still access it through playground mode. Um, they just, they just, they can't run it and they can't edit it. Mm -hmm. um, next question was, do for workflows in Terra, does it have to use Whittle? Can they use CWL, Snake, Make, Next, Flow, etc.? Okay, so Elizabeth, if I'm wrong, please correct me. Uh, right now, the Whittle is the Whittle's running engine is Comel. Comel take Whittle and CWL. I think Terra right now take only Whittle. That is correct. Yes. So. You can, yeah, if you want to, I mean, Chrome L, running Chrome L locally is not difficult, actually, pretty straightforward. But I mean, I want to use Terra as like easy resource and don't need to think about the, the infrastructure building and maintaining. So in that purpose, I think, yeah, so for that, like, I want to do, uh, I want to use, I don't have much motivation to use Chrome L in the locally unless I'm testing the workflow or so. But you can do CWL with with Cornell, but not in Terra, at least for now. Uh, okay, there was a question for me, the ballpark figure of the cost for my class and would it scale linearly with the number of students? Uh, so I, they didn't have big compute requirements for me, so I asked them to use an instance that cost 10 cents per hour. Um, so I would say in total for my class, it ended up costing a couple dollars per student. Um, it was really not very much, um, and yes, it would scale linearly with the, with the number of students. Next question, regarding the public data sets, is it mainly human data, or are there data for other organisms? And maybe Elizabeth could answer that one yeah. best. Yeah, I answered this in the chat too. Um, oh. And uh, it is there, I think most of the data sets are primarily human. However, a couple of them, like the ENCODE and the Human Cell Atlas, also have mouse data as well. All right. Um, which parts of this are Terra and which parts are Anvil? That's a good question. <laughs> okay, so which part is Terra or how to... Uh, oh, the, I, I kind of have in my head, it's a really hard, <laughs> little complicating to put in the word. So Terra is the platform that Broad Institute is build and support and maintain. And then Anvil is the the world, like, so the consortium project, that's like, so Envil is from NHGRI, so they are interested in the human, oh, what is that, oh, genomic data, so human data. So they, the different consortium, so like the stage and NH, uh, NHGRI, so, so for example, Taphamed is from NHLBI or something like this, I don't remember. So different, uh, the consortium, consortium, host has different interest in the different data set. So they are supporting different data set, but they are sharing the platform. So it's kind of, how can I say? It? So behind the, behind the scene, you can access to everything, but, uh, okay, I have a little hard time to put <laughs> it in the words. It's, it's, yeah. It, so the I guess like the easiest thing is the platform itself is Terra. So everything that's in the platform is Terra. Um, and then for the Anvil side of it, um, the we do have, there is an Anvil branded Terra yeah. platform, but it's still Terra. Um, and then you can, any um, Docker images, so your notebook runtime, you can import Anvil specific Docker images that Anvil has created. You can access tools from Terra that are Anvil specific, and you can access data sets from Terra that are related to Anvil. But um, it's also, the thing is like something like, 
it's like the landing page for is like Anvil Terra and then like the state data stages Terra are different, but behind the scene everything is the same. So it increased the interoperability between the different projects because you can actually access resources across the project within Terra. Is it correct? Yes, you can access all yeah. the same resources from um, uh, from the Anvil brand of Terra that you could access in um, all the additional resources, I should say, that anyone else could access from Terra. Yeah, so the, so like a bioconductor package Anvil is like facilitating this, but it also can be used. So I think in some sense, yeah, it's a little confusing. I maybe <laughs> maybe yeah. I'll say in, in my own mind, the, 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 the main Anvil components are um, from, I mean, I, I obviously have a bioconductor centric perspective, but the, the new accessibility of the Terra platform for bioconductor users um, and, and um, Galaxy users is really Anvil, Anvil project. I, I mean, that's not all of it, but from, from our perspective, that's the, that's the, the big part of it. Um, the next question, this is an easy one. Can we store private in-house data that other uh, people can't see? Um, answer is yes. And a nice thing about it is that is that the sharing is very, you can control it easily. I mean, the default is that no one else can see it, but then it's also easy, say, to share it with your lab group and give other people who should have access mm -hmm. to that particular data access. Um, okay, next question, something you have experience with, Seyun. Um, suppose that I have ERA Commons access, can I directly get access granted to all the available data? I will say yes. I actually have only one data set access, so let me go through. So, so if I go my account, go to the profile, and actually there is the identity and external services. So if I go to the there then for example actually i have a few yeah so i have nih uh nih account nhlbi and uh, some of other data sets so if you go there then it asks me to link my so practically log into the era and then once i do that it figure out what kind of so for example the gtex i'm not authorized and target i'm not authorized and tcj i'm authorized to have access so it's just like one login and then it's like expire like every month or something every i think it's every month every other month because it's occasionally asked me to relink the, my account but i think it's figuring out what i what which data set i have access to just by one Login. The nice thing too, once you have access through ERA Commons, you just have access through Terra. Like it yeah. just takes care of that for you. Yeah, it's that part. I I haven't had any issue. That part is maybe one of the most smooth ones. Like very easy. So I will mention that we are at time. So if anyone wanted to make it to a ten o'clock, they can sign off. Um, a lot of the questions have been answered or are answering in the chat and we can stick around for a couple extra minutes, but if anyone wanted to make it 10 o'clock, um, just letting you know that we are at 10 So I think we have only three more questions unanswered. I've been looking at only pores, so. I also just wanted to mention for the linking to external servers, I put a documentation on there in case anyone didn't follow how that was done. I put that into the chat. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> yeah, so should we? Uh, oh, that's just, I think we can finish the question. Uh, okay, Levi, what do you think? Should we? Um, sure. The, well, we sort of yeah, we pretty much answered covered the, the version control. I covered the Onyx billing account. I think Onyx billing account is great. Yeah. Um, okay. uh, I think there are a lot of runtime configuration good. options. What do you recommend? Yeah, and I think Natash put an answer in the chat for this as well. Oh, okay. I will mention there was also a question in, and that was answered in the chat about if it was HIPAA compliant that Elizabeth oh. answered. Um, and um, she put a link in there to about uh, the, a comment on the HIPAA section and that it's not, it's a FISMA moderate. So um, 
that one was also answered in the chat if anyone was interested in that. Yep, I think we are pretty good. Is there many, I, I haven't looked at the chat part. Can we sh save the chat history? I want to see what kind of questions were there. Uh, yes, and it will be available also, I think, in the public forum section. I think every chat is visible there mm -hmm. for at least an extended period of time. Thank, Thank you very much, Sayun. A lot of good questions, and I'm glad that people could follow enough to ask questions. So I'm very happy and mm -hmm. hope you enjoy and bye guys.